You got to hear that by the Spirit of God because, you know, sometimes we can highlight faith, we can highlight healing, we can highlight peace, we can highlight various messages and put a lot of emphasis on the messages, but I'm here to tell you there is no message in the Word of God that takes precedence that outranks the love of God and the church said. And you have to know that, you have to settle that, because once you know it in your knower, and you begin to get that settled on the inside of you, then you will begin to strive for it, then you will begin to have an earnest desire to acquire and develop yourself in the love of God, because it is the most important. Amen? There's nothing in the Word of God that outranks the love of God. Amen? Last week I had the opportunity to teach on a message that was entitled, Now Abideth These Three. And it's coming from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 where Paul talks about the uh, Now Abideth These Three, uh, which is faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is the love of God. Amen. You have to understand that Paul is saying that in, during his tenure... In spending with Jesus Christ and during his tenure and what he has seen, what he has heard, what he has experienced, he has extracted from that three main elements. These are the three greatest forces in the world. Faith, hope, and love. He said, now abideth these three right here. Please understand me. And the greatest is love. Glory to God. you got to understand what he's saying. Because uh, nothing, this truth, will never change. Even though some, some people try to put it out there like, no, this is more important, no, that's more important. No, 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 no. This is a truth that will never change. Love has always been the most important, and it will always be the most important. Nothing in the Word of God trumps the love of God. Amen? The love of God trumps your peace. The love of God trumps faith. The love of God trumps wisdom. The love of God trumps everything. Matter of fact, you can't have anything in the gospel flowing the way it's supposed to flow if you are not developed, rooted, grounded, and settled and anchored in the love of God. The love of God is the master key that you have been looking for as a born-again believer. And you've got to hear this by the Spirit because, you know, some people will read the Word of God and they'll highlight, like, for example, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Well, praise God. You know, something I need for you to understand about that, because some people will conclude that out of the whole Bible, that wisdom is the principal thing. When Solomon could not have possibly meant that, because there's a part, a portion of the doctrine that was not yet available to him when he said, Wisdom is the principal thing. And the church said, In other words, the doctrine of grace and the doctrine of Christ was not available to Solomon when he said, Wisdom is the principal thing. And the church said, So he could not conclude out the whole Bible wisdom is the principal thing if he didn't have it available to him. And the church said. Now, so we can conclude that in that dispensation, in that era of time, wisdom was the principal thing. But now, in our dispensation and in our era, love is the most important thing. And the church said. Did y'all hear that? you got to know that by the Spirit because sometimes we can read the Word of God and take some things from out of the Old Testament and try to make it transcend the New Testament when that's not what he meant at all. Amen? Let me ask you a question. What is Solomon known for? Let's say it one more time. What is Solomon known for? Now, is it strange to anybody in this room that somebody who's known for wisdom to say that wisdom is the principal thing? It shouldn't be strange to nobody in here. The Word of God also says that God is... What? God is... It should not be strange to anybody in this room for somebody who is known for love, for love to be the most important thing. And the church said, are you listening to me? In other words, do not confuse one dispensation with another dispensation. Amen? 
And once you learn how to divide the dispensational truths, then you'll know how you're supposed to flow in the current dispensation in which we live as born-again believers. And the church said, Love has always been numero uno. And the church said that. In fact, even in the Old Testament, love was numero uno. And the church said that. Are you listening to me? It is the only spiritual commandment that transferred or transcended into the New Testament and it will never ever change. Don't allow yourself to get confused by hearing a lot about faith and hearing a lot about healing and hearing a lot about peace and hearing a lot about the grace of God. Your grace don't work if you don't have love. It was the great, it was the love of God that begot the grace of God. Are you listening to me? So don't get confused just because you hear a lot in the mainstream when they're teaching about the grace of God, even though they're using the terminology of grace, they're teaching about the love that God bestowed upon mankind. So when they're teaching grace, they're teaching love. It's the divine expression of God's love toward a people who could not earn it, toward a people who could not deserve it, toward a people who could not merit it. An unconditional love that God has bestowed and commended to mankind. Glory to God. A love that is already programmed to do what it do. Glory to God. To do you good and make you happy all the days of your life. Glory to God. To heal you from the inside out. Glory to God. To reconcile mankind back to Him. That kind of love, glory to God, is not a love that we were naturally born with, but it is a love that we inherited from God. You can't have no successful relationship if you're basing it on the natural love that you were born with. It is infected. It don't work no more. It has a lot of things attached to it that will cause you to compromise when things are not going your way. And the church said, duh. But the love of God gives you the ability to supersede the limitations of your flesh and fulfill the perfect will of God every time. Even when your flesh don't want to go no more, even when your flesh can't take it no more, even when you get vexed within your flesh, please understand me, the love of God that you've inherited will fulfill the will of God. And the church said, it is the key to you getting your prosperity. It is the key to healing. It is the key to your peace. It is the key to your joy. It is the key to everything working in your life. Glory to God. And you got to start seeing it as the key. It is the master key to everything. And you'll notice no matter what we be what we're preaching, you'll notice that all men of God, if you really show up, you'll always find yourself right back to love. Yes, you will. It will always happen. Why? Because that's the Holy Ghost on the inside of fivefold ministry gifts, teaching them to go back to the beginning. I always have to bring it back full circle. Amen. You can teach on this, and you can teach on that, you can teach on this. And you can, man, you can beg people, run around the church and everything else. But no, 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 no. He says, go back to the beginning. Go back to the love of God. Because once they get the love of God, then they can get their peace. Once they get the love of God, they can get their joy. Once they get the love of God, they tap into a life of exceedingly and abundantly above all they can ask or think. Once they get the love of God, then they have full access, glory to God. To everything that we can possibly desire, now I have full access. Why? Because I got the key that I need in order to get access to what I want. And the church said, Now let nobody fool you, coming up with all these different type of doctrines and everything. No, 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 no. If it's not based on love, don't follow that gospel. Don't follow that doctrine. Amen. You got to hear that by the Spirit. Amen. It's always been about the love of God. Amen? And as a born-again believer, it's time for the love of God to come back to the body of Christ. 
Why is that? Because in the book of Matthew, chapter 12, uh, I believe it's verse 24, somewhere in around that area, it says, it says that the love of God shall wax cold. It says that the love of many, because iniquity will abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Now, he's talking about agape love and the only carriers of agape love are born again believers. Hear this. Non-believers are not carriers of agape love. And the church said, only born again believers are the carriers of agape love. That unconditional love that God deposited on the inside of earth and vessels that enables us to love those people that we just can't stand. And the church said, die. Are you listening to me? And some people say, that, oh, you're talking about love. I can't, I don't like them. Are you listening to me? But the love of God will get on the inside of you and it will begin to change your heart. It will begin to change your mind to the point to where now you're thinking correctly. And now that I'm thinking right toward that individual, now I can talk right toward that individual. I can act right toward that individual. Are you listening to me? Saints, this is the message that we have to get ingrained on the inside of us as born-again believers. We have to get it ingrained. Before you get anything else, you better get this love. Because we can't keep going around and talking about, you know, I just don't get it. I don't understand how to walk in the love of God. You know, I wasn't raised to walk in the love of God. And, you know, I was treated bad, you know, when I was raised and everything. I don't take that lightly and everything else. But check this out. You, watch this, excuse my English, you is born again. <laughs> so don't base what it is that you were born of based on what you're supposed to be doing right now. Amen. You might have been born a heathen, but you are no longer a heathen because you've been born again now. And the church said, your heart might have been as black as coal when you were born into this natural realm. You might have been raised rough, glory to God. But you are now born again. So that is no excuse why you can't walk in what you have been born in. And the church said, mm -hmm. You got to hear that? There's no excuse. No more. Amen. Everybody has had their own issues in the natural. I had mine. I'm sure everybody had theirs. Amen. But guess what? Those natural issues that I was born with don't impede my forward spiritual progress. Why? Because I'm continually bringing my soul under subjection and bringing my flesh and body under subjection. In other words, I'm making my soul do what it's supposed to do and make it line up with the Word of God. And the church said, check this out, that's what believers do. That's what we do. We make the soul line up to the Spirit of God that's on the inside of us because if the soul doesn't line up to the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God cannot transfer the Spirit of God has everything we need, everything that we want, everything we possibly desire, but the Spirit of God will not transfer if the soul is not submitted. And the church said, did y'all hear that? So we, as born-again believers, we got to bring our soul under subjection so that we can begin to tap into everything that our hearts can possibly desire. Amen? Amen. Did you all get all that? Dear God, I show sure said a lot, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I guess I need to tell you a title, praise God. Well, this morning I want to teach on a, a message that is entitled, The Way of Life. The Way of Life. And I don't want you to look at the, uh, conclude that title as meaning um, existence, but I'm talking about love is how we make our living. Hear that? Love, the way of life. The Chinese say, the tale of life. Amen? Love is how you make your living in this life. 
Love is how we make our living in this life. The living that you desire is contingent upon how you love. No secret. Amen. It's in the Word of God. And we're looking for all these other different things and try to do this strategy and that strategy and this strategy. No, 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 no. The life you desire is contingent upon how you love. And the church said, duh. You got to hear that by the Spirit. There is no trick about it. Your desires are wrapped up in how you love. Amen. He did not only put, he did not put his love on the inside of earthen vessels just because. But he put his love on the inside of earthen vessels so that you can be him in this earth realm. You gotta hear that. So you can be him in this earth realm. In other words, the same grace that he extended towards you, why wouldn't you extend it to somebody else? The same love that He extended to us, why wouldn't we extend it to somebody else? The same peace that He extended to us, why wouldn't we extend it to somebody else? He deposited the same type of love that He has on the inside of Him in you. But no, we want to be fighting and backbiting and, and with some strife and some contention and all that other stuff. We got all that other stuff going on. But he said, no, 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 I deliberately deposit my love on the inside of you so that you can fulfill the ministry of reconciliation. If I tell you to agree with your adversary quickly, how much more for your brothers and sisters who are related to you? Amen. No, when I get mad at this brother right here, shoot, I become emotionally unavailable. I don't want to talk to him no more. I don't. You know how we do. We don't want to talk to one another when we get mad at each other. We just distance ourselves from that person. That's not the love of God. Are you listening to me? That's not the love of God. The love of God loves just because. The love of God is not based on how somebody treats you or somebody acts towards you. The love of God is not based on condition. That's why it is the agape love, which is unconditional love. Please understand me. The relationships throughout the world are deteriorating because we don't know how to differentiate between the natural love we were born with and the love of God that we've inherited from God. They're, they're, they're just being wasted. Amen. Why is that? Because the love of God that you inherited from God will also teach you how to talk to one another. Yes, it will. Teach you how to talk to one another. Teach you how to think about one another. Teach you how to pray for one another. Teach you how to love one another. Teach you about companionship. Teach you about fellowship. Teach you how to kick it with each other. You know what I'm saying. Are you listening to me? The love of God, listen to this. It is a societal law that will never change. It is not a ceremonial law. It is a societal law. A societal law is a law that determines how we get along. Amen. How we get along with each other. And he said, guys, what you desire in life is contingent upon how you love. He says, get this, get life. Amen. Get this, you can get this right here. I'm talking about not, okay, we all have eternal life. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about everything you desire is locked up in life. Everything, every tangible desire that you have is locked up in life. He says, you get this, you have access to this. What does that mean? Dear God, I got to get serious about that. I got to get serious about knowing how to love people and treating people right and talking to people right. And, you know, I don't know about y'all, I was raised in military. Here to tell you, my dad will tell you straight off, he was raised rough. Amen. I had to unlearn that. Amen. To where back in the day, I used to say exactly what was on my mind. And I didn't care how you felt about it. 
until I learned in the Word of God that only a fool uttereth his mind. <laughs> all of his mind. <laughs> Amen. Only a fool uttereth all of his mind. So I had to get into the Word of God. I had to unlearn some things that I was born with. And begin, now I began to walk in my new, uh, new creation to where now that's not a part of me anymore. Amen. I don't think nobody in here could ever hear, talk. I've never really hollered at anybody. Amen. But can, check this out. I'll rave with it now. Amen. You got to hear that by the Spirit. But the Word of God did that. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that's what Paul shouts from the rooftop. We got to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We got to consistently be renewing our mind so that we can earn, unlearn some things that we were taught when we were brought up. Amen. Because now, he says, love is what it's all about. Demonstrating the love of God one toward another to where we can walk in the peace one toward another to where now we fellowship with one another. We're having fun with one another. Do you know even natural love, listen to this part, even natural love, when you are loving yourself with balance, I ain't talking about that arrogant stuff. I'm talking about loving yourself with balance. Even in the natural, do you know that natural love produces Chemicals in your body that produce healing? Uh-huh. Yes, it does. It promotes healing in your body. What we have received is a spiritual dosage of a supernatural love on the inside of us. And when it's working properly... It produces healing in your body. Glory to God. It will heal your broken emotions. Glory to God. It will restore you and make you whole. Glory to God. From the inside out. It will make you better. It will it, it promotes long, healthy, prosperous life. Why? Because the chemicals are being released in your body. Because dear God, I love myself with balance. Love yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Well, dear God, it's impossible to love your neighbor if you don't love yourself. How are you going to do that? You don't even know how to love yourself. Amen. You're still broken on the inside. And you try to hide the fact that you're still broken on the inside. So now what you do, you want to connect yourself with somebody else who's also broken. To where now, soon after you connect with one another, now you have what's called a broken relationship. Why is that? Because you didn't know how to love yourself first through the Word of God. Are you listening to me? You didn't know how to love yourself first. Love yourself with the Word of God. In other words, until, uh, and, until the time comes, you know, I'm in courtship with Jesus Christ. Amen. In other words, I'm understanding about the love of God. I'm understanding. I'm, I'm allowing it to, uh, to, to change the way that I think and change the way that I talk and change the way that I walk and change everything about me. I'm allowing that love, His spiritual, unconditional love, get on the inside of me and every fiber of my being to the Word. Now, when I connect myself to somebody else, dear God, it'll cause an explosion. Amen. It will cause an explosion to take place. Why? Because you'll notice one thing about it. We attract our own kind. Don't you fool yourself into thinking you don't attract your own kind. Amen. So what that means, if I want to change the kind... I, not, I need to take the love of God and get it on the inside. I need to take that love that's on the inside of me, that's been deposited on the inside of me, and allow the love of God to heal me from the inside out and begin to change me from the inside out to where now I'm attracting a different kind. Amen? In other words, the love of God, dear God, it taught me how to talk, it taught me how to walk, and taught me how to treat my wife, and you got to hear that by the Spirit. I don't, you know, my mother-in-law, she's like Medea. Amen. 
And I want you to know that Grace Jones did name her daughter, and her name starts with a G. Her name don't start with no B. You got to hear that. With a G, not no B. Did you hear that? I don't call my name, my wife, outside her name. You got to hear that now. I don't talk at my wife. I treat her gentle. If you love them right, then they act right. I'm just saying. And if they ain't acting right, you must ain't love them right. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. Amen. We don't do that and that stuff. Hollering at my wife and trying to have dominion over my wife. No, man. That, that ain't what the Bible said. Amen. Love my wife as Christ also loved the church. Glory to God. With the God kind of love. Amen. Y'all got to hear that by the Spirit. Love is the key to everything. Amen. And guess what? I get the harvest of the love seeds that I sow. Imagine it. I mean, I, mean I, I don't know why I'm going this direction, but you got to hear this by the Spirit. Imagine if I treat my wife bad. I get the harvest of me treating my wife bad. That's crazy to me. I'm sowing bad seeds in her by talking bad to her. Guess who's going to get the harvest of that? I get the harvest of that. So if I know that whatever seeds that I sow in my wife, I get the harvest, dear God, I think I'm going to change the seeds. It's not rocket science. Are you hearing me? I'm going to talk to her right. I'm going to sow the right seed. I'm going to sow every seed that I need to see. Every seed that I desire to see in her, I'm going to sow it in her so that I can reap the harvest. Amen? That's the love of God. Did y'all hear that? Amen! Amen! You got to hear it by the Spirit of God. We ain't got no fake marriage. Amen? No, we don't. It's the real deal. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. All righty then. There was nowhere in the notes, amen. That was all for you, praise God. Hallelujah, glory to God. <laughs> I'm here to tell you that God is a good God, amen. Turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. And sometimes men, uh, it's important that men of God hear that. Because, you know, in the back, in the booth, in the corner, in the dark, I'm here to tell you, we, we do some stuff and say some stuff just because can't nobody hear us. And we treat people bad, amen? Just repent, get it right. Amen? Hebrews 10, verse 38. Just say amen when you're there. All right, and I just, want, I just want to build a little foundation here uh, real quick. It reads like this. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul have no pleasure in him. The just shall live by faith. Now it's important for you to understand that it is virtually impossible for you to have the life that you desire to have if, you're, if you don't have the understanding that faith worketh by love. If you don't have that understanding, then there's no possible way that the just, that you will be able to live by your faith. Amen. There's no possible way that you'll be able to see the life that you desire to see as a born-again believer if you're not incorporating the love of God in what you're doing. If the love of God is not your foundation, please understand me, we will never experience the love and the life that we desire to experience. Amen? Why? Because it is the master key to life is love. The master key to life is love. 
I'm going to say it differently. The master key to the life you desire is love. You love people in how you think about people. You love people in how you talk about people. You love people in how you treat people. You love people in how you serve people. You love people in everything that you do. I don't care if they make you doggone it mad. You just keep on loving them and keep on loving them and keep on loving them. And your love, watch this, will become contagious. It will begin to infect them to the point to where, dear God, now they're just being nice to you. They don't even know why they're nice to you. They don't know why they're being nice to you. They don't know what happened. All of a sudden, they just start liking you. Why? Because you remain consistent in operating in your identity, which is love. Amen. That's who we are. That's what we do. That's what we're supposed to do as born-again believers. The Word of God says, love your enemies. How in God's name? Are you kidding me? Really? You talk about that person who talked about me? You talk about that person who pulled a rug up from underneath me, just conspired against me, did me wrong? And, and oh, Are you hearing me? He says to love your enemies. Why does he say that? Because that is the most powerful weapon in your arsenal. It's the most powerful weapon that you have as a born-again believer is to love them. Because watch this. When you love them, you'll pray for them. When you pray for them, that's incorporated with love. Then all of a sudden, they'll begin to change. Love is the most powerful weapon in your arsenal that you have as a born again believer. Amen. It is the most powerful. The worst thing that you can ever do to your enemy is to love them. You got to hear that again. The worst thing that you can ever do to your enemy is to love them. Amen. They treat you bad. They conspire against you, talk about you, dog you out and everything. Just keep loving. Just keep loving them. Now check this out. In the Bible it says it like this because, you know, we use this in premarital counseling. First um, Peter chapter 3 where it says, Likewise, you wives, if your husbands obey not the word, they can also without the word be won by the conversation. Check this out. Or the lifestyles of the wife. Amen. In other words, while she maintains her consistency of doing the word of God, walking with her chaste and meek spirit, and loving personality, regardless of how much of a fool he might act. Are you hearing me? Then because of her consistency, he'll be won by her consistency, even though he ain't in the Word. And the church said, you got to hear that by the Spirit. Amen. What? That's the power of God's love. Amen. But check this out. If you get out of the box, when they get out of the box, are you listening to me? It perpetuates the problem. And the church said, it says that the just shall walk by faith, the just shall walk by faith. You cannot walk by faith. You cannot have your way of life. You cannot have the life you desire to have if you do not understand that faith worketh by love. It always has and it always will. Amen. I want you to uh, turn with me to the book of Ezekiel. I want to show you this real quick. Ezekiel. Are y'all with me? All right. I think I went off on a little tangent, but y'all got that. I mean, I, I mean, I and I and I say that with the utmost boldness because I expect the men of perfecting the saints church international to operate like the man of perfecting the saints church international you treat your women with respect talk to them with respect teach them how to love i mean teach teach them how to do what needs to be done with the love of god amen you got to hear that by the spirit amen let us be an example amen <laughs> I know that y'all didn't shout me down on them, but that's all right. I'm, I'm just trying to help you. Amen. We don't have no raggedy marriage. I'm sorry. We ain't got no raggedy marriage. Raggedy relationship. We don't have that. Mm -mm. 
My wife's my best friend. It is what it is. And I'm not going to shut my mouth about it. <clears throat> Amen. Like, no, it happens. That show always he be quiet about that marriage thing. I show him on him. I can't believe he keep on talking about that marriage stuff. <laughs> Better, you better let me say that thing. Amen. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the... Faith coming by hearing. You got to hear it. Amen. Amen. And just celebrated 22 years yesterday. And the church said... Uh, Twenty-two successful years. And the church said, Amen. <laughs> Y'all funny. <laughs> I hear people in this room, Okay, move on, move on, move on. <laughs> I don't say none of that to make anybody uncomfortable, but I do say it to arrest your attention as the pastor of this house that it is important that we get back to the basics on how to treat one another. And the marriage relationship is the key relationship to all other relationships. Amen. And the sanctity of marriage really has been downplayed for entirely too long. To the point of confusion. Did you hear what I said? All right. Okay. We'll move on. Ezekiel 16, 8, it reads this way. Now when I passed by thee, I looked upon thee. Behold, thy time was the time of love. And, in my, and I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. And I swear unto thee, I entered into a covenant with thee, said the Lord God. And thou became his mind. Now I want you to know that this whole passage is talking about the restoration of Israel. But what's important for you to understand is to know is that, you know, the time that was declared over them has to hit the church first. Amen. But what I want you to zero in on is that there, he said that there is a time that it was coming to where... All I want to do is demonstrate my love towards you. I don't want to be angry at you. I don't want to be upset with you. I don't want to judge you during this time. He said, but your time is the time of love to where I just want to do you good and make you happy. Amen. And he says that he said that this time is coming. Um, he said that this time is supposed, it's been earmarked before the foundations of this earth that there was a time that was coming to where God would demonstrate the love of God towards His people. In other words, this is the dispensation of grace to where God demonstrates the love of God towards His people. Knowing that, we have to understand that if our time is the time of love, nothing works in this time except it worked by love. Amen? He said, okay, your time is going to be the time of love. Check this out. What that means is, your time, this time that I'm initiating, I'm initiating it, and it's coming from the foundation of love. And what that means to every born-again believer is that nothing in this time is going to work for you, no matter what you do, unless you do it by love. Amen? We're looking for the way of life. We're looking for the blessings of God. We're looking for the manifestation of God. It only happens when you learn how to love. And the church said, <laughs> Y'all still stuck on that marriage thing. Y'all kind of got quiet on me. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? Everything is contingent upon the love of God. When he's talking about the dispensation of God's grace, all it is is the divine expression of God's love that he bestowed upon his people. Divine expression of my love. I just want to show them how to love them. 
So in order to show them that I love them, I'm going to extend my grace to them. And my grace is going to cover them in every area of their life. That's why I said that my grace is sufficient for thee. Because my grace, anything that you can go through, anything you can imagine, anything that you want, anything that you could possibly desire, check this out. I've already factored it in and encapsulated in my grace. Amen. And he says, this is how I'm demonstrating to you how much I love you. Besides, I gave you my only begotten son. <laughs> Amen. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Thanks. we've got to understand this. We search for a lot of um, quick things and quick fixes. And no, he said, no, you, you, you're wasting your time. Please understand me in my tenure in the word of God. Love is number one. Amen. Love is number one. Amen. You would waste a lot of time trying to find another solution to life itself. Love is number one. It always has been and it always will be. Amen. And I'm going to show you in the Word of God to where he talks about, you know, he says very clearly, you know, this is the beginning message. In other words, this is what we started with. And check this out. This is what we go in with. Amen. And Zephaniah, you can read it in your own time. It says it like this. You know, I will rest in the silent satisfaction of my love. Understand this, that rest, uh, sitting is a position of rest. Sitting is a position of rest. And what that simply means is, as long as he's seated at the right hand of the Father, then... His, what he said has to correspond with his current position. He said, I'm seated at the right hand of the Father. He said, I will rest in the silent satisfaction of my love. In other words, his love has already been sent out and is already programmed to do what it's supposed to do. Amen. It's already programmed. It's already programmed to heal. It's already programmed to restore. It's already programmed to deliver. It's already programmed to make whole. It's already programmed to reconcile us one to another. It's already programmed to connect us together with one another, the only thing we need to learn how to do is learn how to love one another. Before we do that, we need to learn how to love ourselves. Amen? Because, check this out, when I learn how to love myself, then I won't be so mad. I won't be so mad at myself. I won't be so mad all the time when I learn how to love myself. You got some Christians who are just doggone, they mad all the time. Amen? He gets upset all the time. Like, God, dog, what's the matter with you today? <laughs> Are you hearing me? What's wrong with you? <laughs> because they're always mad. Please understand. That's because they're missing. There's a void on the inside. Please hear this by the Spirit of God. Anybody who wrestles with themselves, don't you think for one second that they're not going to wrestle with you. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. They're going to wrestle with you too. Why? They're wrestling within themselves. Are you hearing me? And that's how we have broken relationships. Because here it is. I'm going to connect myself to somebody and I'm still wrestling on the inside. <laughs> I ain't got my stuff together. I want to hook up with somebody else who don't got themselves together. Amen. Cause the problem. That's why those of you who are single... Perfect your singleness while you got it. I'm going to say it one more time. Perfect your singleness while you got it. Amen? Perfect it. How am I going to do that? I'm going to get into the Word of God and I'm going to work on me. I'm going to work on me. I'm going to get in courtship with Jesus Christ. Allow Him to minister to me. Amen? you got to hear that by the Spirit. Amen? We're trying to preserve relationships. But they keep destroying and breaking up. And, and I don't want to talk to you no more. And you don't want to talk to me. And we become emotionally unavailable. And we get due to silent treatment for two weeks. <laughs> Are you lit? Due to silent treatment for so long to where you forgot what it is that you got silent about. <laughs> God almighty, really? Are you hearing that? For real, man. Enough is enough. And all God is saying, let me say it like that, all the Lord is saying is, will you be me while I'm gone? Will you be me in the earth 
will you be me? Because I gave you all that was in me and I put it in you so that you could be me while I'm gone. Will you be me? Will you reach out and touch those people who nobody else wants to reach out and touch? Will you reach out and talk to those people who don't nobody else want to talk to? Because that's, he, he like this, that's who I am. Amen. He said, I'll reach out to, I, and even talk to those people who might not necessarily smell the way that I smell. Amen. Those other people, that, the people that we hold our nose down to. And like, hmm. You know what I'm talking about. Sometimes as Christian people, we can be too highfalutin. <laughs> Amen. Too uppity. Think we all that. Are you hearing me? All he wants you to do is be him. He the head, we the body. If we the body, why ain't we reaching? <laughs> Amen. He the head, we the body. He the head. In other words, all instructions come from the to the body, and the body is supposed to execute what the head say. Did y'all hear that? He's telling us, I already deposited everything that you need in order to be me in the earth. Amen. And that's another reason why he said, lean not to your own understanding. Well, what in the world are we going to lean to our own understanding for when he's supposed to be the head? <laughs> are you hearing me? Why in the world am I going to try to use my head with my limited understanding, my limited knowledge, when I can access here? Are you hearing me? He the head, I'm the body. And we got to start seeing it from that perspective because that's the reason why he said, I don't say nothing unless my father say it. Why? Because I'm an extension of him. Check this out. Holy Ghost did the same thing. I don't say nothing unless Jesus say it. <laughs> Amen. Because they're one. If he the head, we the body, then we're also one. We got to start listening to what the head says instead of what our head says. Did y'all hear that? Because a lot of times when we listen to our head, it causes a lot of problems. Amen. Causes too many problems. No, it had mercy. I'll never get to finish my message. It just... Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you. He just interjecting and in everything. I, we give him lead way, praise God. <laughs> Turn with me to the book of Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. You know, I willingly lead, allow the Holy Spirit to just do what he wants to do. Sometimes we can put a message together and go by every letter and every no. Holy Ghost has free reign. Amen. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I want to just show you this real quick because I know I showed this to you before but you got to hear this by the Spirit so that you can understand. Just say amen when you're in chapter 5. It reads like this, verse 6. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Faith which worketh by love. Now, I want you to understand that not only does faith worketh by love, but your peace worketh by love. Your joy worketh by love. Your happiness worketh by love. Your gentleness worketh by love. Please understand me. When he said faith worketh by love, he could have continued on because every single thing works by love. Amen. And if you look up that word worketh, it will translate into a word called energia, which will translate back into our English language as the word energy or energizes. He says that your faith is energized by love. And when it is energized by love, that's what avails all things. In order to live the life that you want to live, in order to have the way of life you desire to have, he says your faith has to work by love. Amen. Your love must energize everything. 
your love is the power source to everything. I deliberately said it different. Amen. Your love is the power source to your prosperity. Your love is the power source to your healing. Your love is the power source to your peace. Your love is the power source to your awesome 22-year successful relationship. Your love is the power source to everything you can possibly desire. He just concluded it as your love is the power source to faith. Amen. If your love is the power source to faith, then your love is the power source to everything else. You got to hear that by the Spirit. Because all of us want a life that to where we, there's nothing missing, nothing broken. Everybody wants that. Amen. You got to hear that by the Spirit. In order for you to get it, he says, get the fundamentals first. What is that? Learning how to love. Love yourself. Love your neighbor. Amen. Love yourself. Love your neighbor. Yeah, I love God. No, no, no. He said, you know, for the most part, that's not really the main issue. Amen. He said, learning how to love yourself and love your neighbor is a big issue. Amen. You ask people, what's the second greatest commandment? That we ought to love your neighbor. But that's not the whole truth. You can't love your neighbor unless you love yourself. Amen. It's a, it's a, it's a twofold commandment. And here's what we've done. We, we got confused. Whenever we received our free moral agency, we had the right to decide and choose and everything else. And in the Word of God, it says that love is a commandment. Don't ever let that confuse you. Because wherever you see the word commandment, he's wondering in his mind, what are you trying to decide? Because you're not supposed to exercise your free moral agency to void out the commandment when you come across people that you don't like. He ain't supposed to do that. It don't work like that. He says, love is a commandment. He's like, what in the world are you trying to decide to do it for? He said, just do it. He Check this out. He can't say to you, just do it, without giving you what you need in order to do it. He already gave us what we need in order to do it. That's why he commanded us to do it. And the church said, are you hearing it? So it's not like he's asking us for something that is impossible for us. No, he's asking us to do. He's matter of fact, he commanded us to do something that he's already equipped us for. He said it's a commandment. He said, there's no reason for us to get confused on that. He says, you cannot exercise your free moral agency when you come across people that you don't like. He says, commandment is a commandment. It does not ever change. Amen? In James chapter 2, verse 8, it reads like this. As a matter of fact, you can read it in your own time. For the sake of time, it says, if ye fulfill the royal law, which is to love thy neighbor as you love yourself, then you do well. If you fulfill the royal law, he says that in this life you will do well if you fulfill the royal law. In this life you will do well if you fulfill the royal law. We're looking for all these other things and he said, it's just one thing. Matter of fact, he's like this. It's the same one thing that I fulfilled all the Mosaic law with. He said, and I gave it to you. He said, it's the same one thing. He said, it never changed. It's the one thing. Somebody say, it's the one thing. Are you hearing me? Love of God is the nucleus of everything. Amen. God so loved the world the way he gave his only begotten son. Amen. Without love, the giving wouldn't have happened. And the church said, are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Are y'all getting sleepy? Lord, help them, Jesus. <laughs> Are y'all still with me? <laughs> Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. Let me go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and close because y'all seem like y'all getting tired. So I'll go ahead and start next next week. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, for the sake of time, I really... I'm going to show you this real quick and then I'm going to close. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 20. I know when y'all get tired, y'all either hungry or sleepy one. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10... Or sometimes both. It reads like this. <laughs> having therefore, brethren, Hebrews 10 and 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. He said we have a new and living way. Amen. As a born-again believer, we have a new and living way to live. Our new life is hidden, definitely in Christ Jesus, but at the same time, our new and living way can only be done by the love of God. Everything we want, we have access to it when our love is working right. Amen. When our love is working right. When we can learn how to love ourselves and love other people. Amen. I mean, in essence, falling in love with God is would be the prerequisite. Falling in love with God, that would be the prerequisite because you cannot say that you love God and hate your brother. You can't do that. You can't. You, you just can't do it. Amen. If you can do it, then there's something that is tainted about the love that you say you got for your father. Amen. It's not real. Don't fool yourself into thinking it's real. If you ask everybody in an open forum, do you love God? Everybody raise their hand and everything else. And then when you ask him, uh, you, well, think about those people in your life that you really can't stand. I mean, it would be like, because there are some people that we know that's on the inside of our heart that we just don't like. That's a testament to the love that you say that you have for the Father. Amen. Did y'all hear that? But it's like you fix it right there, then everything else will begin to trickle down like it's supposed to. Amen. Do you know that you are the restorer of the breach? You got to hear that by the Spirit. Some of you have broken relationships within your own personal families. You're the restorer of the breach. Amen. If you are a born-again believer... You are the carrier of agape, unconditional love. You're the one that's supposed to be responsible for restoring that relationship that has been broken for ten years. Are you listening to me? There's certain things that we just tolerate. Now he said, "No, you can fix it. That's why I gave it to you. I equipped you with the ability to fix it. Why ain't you fixing it?" Amen. But we're better off, you know, we're content with operating in the flesh. Amen. All right, last one in the book of Colossians. I can hear y'all out here. I'm, I'm hungry. I want me some bacon. Some grits and eggs. I hear y'all. Stomach growling and everything. Y'all ready? Colossians chapter 3, watch this. Verse 3, amplified. It reads like this. For as far as the world is concerned, you have died, and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. It says your new and real life is hidden with Christ in God. You got to hear it by the Spirit of God. I'm here to tell you, He is the door to the vault that carries everything you want. In order for you to get into that vault, in order for you to get through the door, you got to have three keys, and you got to have one main one, which is faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these keys is love. If you want your desires, then you must perfect your love walk. 
Amen. It's a bad it's a it's a it's a sad testament that you know the divorce rate in the body of Christ is just as high as the secular world. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be that way. How could it be that way if we're the carriers of unconditional love? Amen. The truth be told is that we're still hardening our hearts. When things happen, we we think that it is a strength to be cold, to be callous to people. It is the greatest weakness that you have. Don't see it as a strength. It is a weakness. Amen. <laughs> Anybody can do that. Amen. But it's a weakness. But sometimes we pride ourselves in our ability to become emotionally unavailable. And become cold to people and callous to people. And that's not what we're called to do. We're called to love why? God is love. If we be the children of God, then we too are love. Which means the love of God is my identity. That's who I am. When everybody, anybody meets me, then dear God, they come in contact with my identity. They come in contact with the real me. If they come in contact with anything else, then they're not coming in contact with the real you. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> Go ahead and stand here if you give God some praise in here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I don't mind. I'm going to give it to you straight. Amen. And I just pray that you all receive it. Because you can thank you so much. You can search and search and search and think that there's another solution, there's another plan, and there's another strategy. And if you, you do that, go right in. But I'm here to tell you, it's only one. It's the love of God. Amen. The love of God has changed my life. Amen. Forever. And I'm here to tell you that if it had the ability to change my life, I guarantee it would change yours as well. Amen.